What's going on, peeps? It's Wrath here, hanging out today, playing some Idle Heroes. I want to thank you guys so much for coming to hang out with me today. If you liked the video, don't forget, smash that thumbs up button and share your support. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe as well. Alright guys, today we're doing a little bit of a guide. This is more for new players, but of course, sometimes older players will learn something. If you're kind of a veteran, you probably won't, but new players are important. You guys are the future of the game. If you don't play, nobody will. Um, but anyways, today we're going to talk about how to make progress fast, um, mistakes to avoid, things to shoot for, to make uh, the early game go by a little smoother, but also to make your progress much faster and help yourself from falling into pitfalls and kind of slowing your own progress down, um, you know, because no one wants to do that. So today we're going to talk about a few things, a few steps to follow that's going to help you. I still use every single one of these every day. It helps me out. It's how I, I guess I'm not like the best at the game, but I'm all right. I'm not terrible. Um, but anyways, these are going to help you out, make your progress quicker. And the first thing to note, if you're trying to make like most of the questions I get, let's be honest, are mainly about how do I make progress fast? You know, how do I get my six stars quick? How do I get five stars fast? Um, the reason people want to know how to get five and six stars fast because they want to make progress fast. That's the entire point. So we're going to tell you guys how to do that. That's what we're going to do today. So first up, you got to know where heroes come from. Now, they come from a lot of different places, um, and we're going to cover pretty much all of them. If I miss some, I do. It's just it's a thing. It happens. Um, but the first thing to note is it's not all about four, uh, not about not all about five and six star heroes. That's the big thing people think about. Is like, I got to get fives. Got to get fives. Four star heroes are probably, well, they're not as important as five stars, but they're up there. They're incredibly important to have. So we're going to start things out with where you get four star heroes. Then we'll talk about five star heroes. We'll talk about things you should not do 100%. And then we'll talk about some things you should be doing. And then we'll talk about different ways to get your free gems, um, kind of avoid wasting your gems, things to you know kind of watch out for. I mean, it should help you astronomically increase your process, um, your progress process. Same thing, I guess. Um, as a free to play player or a new player, even if you want to spend some money, these are still going to help you out. So first things first, where do four star heroes come from? They come from a lot of places. You can get four star hero shards in the tavern. Um, sometimes five star quests will have them. Early game, I would say if you get a five star quest with four star shards, especially if you're a free to play player, it's probably not a bad idea to take it just because it's a good way to get extra four stars early on. And you're not going to have a lot of access to them quite yet in the first like week or so of the game. It's a little bit harder to get them. Um, but... If you get them here, okay. If they're on a four-star quest, I don't think I have any four-star quests anywhere. Um, but if they're on a four-star quest, probably just pass them up. They're not really worth it. There's not enough there really be worth it. Um, but a five-star for uh, five-star quest for four-star shards, not a bad place to start. And we'll talk more about the tavern in a moment. But I just wanted to kind of get that out there. Um, second place is going to be the market. This is a great place um, for free-to-play players and early game players. You have one right here. Every single day, you get a five or a four star hero guaranteed one and a half million gold. Now on day one or day two of a server, you might be like, whoa, one and a half million gold every day. That's a lot of gold. Not really, especially once you start getting things like your guild mill running, your celestial island up and running. You're going to make well over a million gold to three million gold every single day. Collecting your campaign loot and stuff like that. It's it's very doable, especially with all, getting all these three stars as well every day. You're going to thank yourself for it later. So I would say this page right here pick these up every single day. You will not regret it. 100% will not regret that. Um, where else do they come from? Profit Tree. By summoning in the Profit Gate, depending on the faction you want to go for, you can get four-star heroes and five-star heroes as well. Um, we'll talk more about this later because it is tied to an event, and that's very important. We'll discuss that in a moment. Um, anyways, Profit Tree. Then we've got the Casino. Um, in this case, it's called the Wishing Fountain. Back when I started it was Casino, I still call it Casino. Sorry. If I say Casino, this is what I mean. Wishing Fountain. Um, the Wishing Fountain is a place that gives both five and four-star heroes. The reason I bring it up for four-star heroes is this is mainly when you're spinning the wheel, you're going for this. You're not shooting for the five-star. The odds are 0.1%, so one in a thousand, um, whereas this is 2%, so, you know, two in a hundred. Not bad. Um, you mainly are going to be getting these four-star heroes during casino events. Again, we'll talk more about that in a moment. Um, but that's important. The casino or the wishing fountain can drop them. Another place to get them is your summons. Your basic summons have a chance to drop them. Um, the info up here probably should tell us. There you go. Um, your friendship summons have a better chance. Basic summons are pretty low. Your four-star chance is only 1.45% there. Friendship summons have a bit higher at 13% chance. So it's not a bad thing to open these up. Um, there's two star here or whatever, and we still got a couple friendship summons. Just pop a couple open. There's a four star. Bam, first one. Couldn't have planned that better. 
awesome. But anyways, four star heroes, they can come from there. Um, so your friendship summons and your basic summons, use them whenever you get them. There's no events tied to those. Um, heroic summons are event based. So we'll talk more about those in a moment. Um, but summons, boom, early campaign, you'll get them later down the road. You don't, but early on in the campaign, the first, you know, couple areas you go into, will have four star rewards dropped at every five interval. So at a, uh, whatever these are, I can't see them now. We'll go back. We'll go back a stage. How about that? Where are we at? Boop. We'll go here. Um, every time you have a multiple of five, so in this case, two eight, uh, 28, five or 28, 10, these not only will they drop four or five star shards from the boss, the first time you beat those waves, they'll reward you in shards. Early game, that'll be three stars and then four star shards. Pretty early on, you're going to jump into five star shards, um, but you do get some four stars there, so it's worth mentioning the campaign is a way to get those. Um, other than the campaign, you've got the seal land later game. This is incredibly important early on. It's going to be very tough. It's not an easy place to beat. Um, no one's beat the seal land yet. Even the biggest whales in the earliest servers, no one's beaten it. It's not possible yet. Um, but it's a great place to get four star heroes. Um, a you get four star heroes just for beating the waves in general. Um, but also after you beat them, you get a, a certain allotment of these, I guess I don't know what they're called, cogs, they look like, but they're smash attempts. You get to smash them every day for free, and that's another way to get four-star shards. Now, obviously, the higher you go up, this is only on wave three out of 20. I only get 12 shards per, per smash, which isn't very many, but when you go to something like an eight out of 20, you can see I pull 23 shards each smash. I get like four smashes a day, so that's like 80-something shards, 90-something shards. That's three four-star heroes a day. More for later game, obviously. Early game players will have some trouble, but even the newest players, as you build that monster up, you can probably take the first wave of everything in the uh, in the seal land, and that's going to help you a lot when it comes to getting four star heroes really early game. Um, but the smashes won't be quite as good for you yet till you get you know at least a wave three and such, at least in one of them. That's going to help you get a little more uh, four star action going on in your life, and that's important. Um, after the event raid, you do get some from the daily sign in. Um, as you see here, four star hero, four star hero. You also get some five stars from this, but it's just one five star per month. Um, but you do get some four stars sprinkled throughout here, not to mention tons of gems um, and some heroic summons and such. Don't forget the login bonus. Um, but also the last one is the uh, event raid. Event raid is incredibly important. You get tons and tons of stuff from the event raid. Um, early game, it's a little slower starting. This is for gold. This is for spirit and promotion stones. The big one to worry about is the hero challenge. Um, it does take a while to get down to this. This is level 160 to unlock this. But early game, you'll still start getting four, uh, four star shards decently early on. And when you do, make sure you don't forget to do those every day because A, it gives you rewards in your daily quests, but B, it's four star heroes and three star heroes all in one, which is great for making fodder. You're doing, you're going to need a ton of them. You're going to need lots, so make sure you maximize this. Uh, my mini account is like level 105 or something, and it's already to this one here. So I get two uh, i get one free four star every single day and two three stars for free just for signing the game doing the event raid make sure you do it later down the road if you decide to go vip you can purchase extra attempts as i do and i make sure i farm all of these out it's only when i spend extra gems on it's not a bad place to spend extra gems but as a free-to-play player you don't have access to that so something to keep in mind either way still a good place to get four star heroes and it's kind of important um as for the five stars the primary way you get five star heroes in this game is going to come through events. Now, these events here aren't really great. They're actually probably the worst events in the game for getting five star heroes. Um, but most other events, actually every other event is better for five star heroes than these. Um, but even in this one, there's an option to get a five star here, a five star there. Um, you can get profit orbs or used to get five stars during events. Um, heroic summon, same thing. And the mysterious chest usually has a hero on offer, but it's usually not a great deal. So I kind of avoid it. Um, but anyways, this event's not the best for it, but n the vast majority of your five-star heroes come from events. Not directly from event-based rewards, but the events themselves, like just doing the events, will give you loot. So, with that said, we'll talk a little bit more about events. And we're going to do that in this what not to do section. So here's what a lot of new players do. I see it on pretty much every server we've played. People get anxious to spin things. Their bag will never look like this, okay? They do not have nearly 300 summons saved up or, you know, 112 profit orbs. They don't have it. They won't ever have it because as soon as they get a profit orb, they say, oop, there's a chance at a four or five star hero. Got to use it. Got to use it right now. And they do. They use up every single resource as soon as they get them. And that is the biggest no-no in the game. 
because that's going to make all your events harder to complete, especially when the events come around. Like if Profit Orb Summon came around tomorrow and you've spent all your orbs all month long not thinking about it, well, when it shows up, now you can't get any of the loot from the award because you, you know, you're not going to have any Profit Orbs to spend. You're not going to get anything from the event. And you really just hurt yourself. That's all you did. You didn't make any good progress. You've actually made less progress than the guy who saved his up and used them during the event because now he's not only getting all the same heroes you got by spending them one at a time, but he's also getting bonus loot from the event. So definitely worth keeping that in mind. It's very important. Very, very, very important. Do not spend your resources as soon as you get them. It's a big waste. So that's going to bring us to the events where you get five-star heroes, and that's going to be, boop, right here, huh? the Profit Tree, probably the best event in the game for gaining new heroes, especially since you get to pick the faction you're going in. So if you want to get Forest Heroes, bam. You want to get Fortress, you want to get Shadow, you want to get Abyss, you get to pick the faction. I would say avoid this one. Unless you're a whale who spends thousands of dollars, this faction is not for you. Do not spend your orbs there. You will regret it. Um, all these are great, mainly this one and this one. These are the two most heavily used. Just a little extra tip there. Abyss and Forest are the two most orbed uh, uh, factions. They have the best heroes right now. Um, Fortress is terrible. Avoid Fortress at all costs, in my opinion. They have the lowest drop rates of all for some reason. Not sure why. It's been data mined. Don't do it. Um, and Shadow doesn't have a ton of great heroes in it. So mainly Abyss and Forest are the two best right now. But, you know, that's beside the point. Wait for the events to come around. Like I said, I got 112. I could be spinning out all kinds of orbs right now, but I'm not. I'm waiting for the profit event. It's the best way to do it. Trust me. Do not waste your resources. You will regret it. The other places four and five star heroes come from, um, summon circles, boom. The heroic summons mainly, um, but basic summons and friendship summons, again, they have a chance, very small chance. Heroic summons are the important one here. Again, tied to an event, so never spend your heroic summons until the event up here says heroic summoning event. Then you spend them. Um, that's when you do it because you spend them like the every time you get one by the time the event comes around you don't have any save back you don't get any of the rewards for actually making progress in the event obviously not what you want um the other place you get five star heroes is actually the creation circle this is where a lot of people overlook especially new players is they look up here and see the six stars and they go oh well that's what i want these right here are almost equally as important as the six stars because you fuse these out of four star heroes that's why four stars are so important, especially when you look up here and realize, say you want to make a six star Horus, um, the only way to do that is with a five star Grumpy Corpse. You're not going to get a Grumpy Corpse from anywhere but the Prophet Tree or by fusing it up. Um, they don't drop from any summons. You're not going to get a five star Grumpy Corpse to ever drop in the game other than from the Prophet Tree. Um, obviously, hero replacements in the Prophet Tree too, um, but also you got to fuse them. That's the main way to get them is you fuse them up. That's why four stars are so important, because without the four stars, you can't fuse up this guy. If you can't fuse up that guy, you're not going to be making this guy. That's why it's kind of important. So fusions are a great way to get five stars. That's why your four star heroes are so important and why I stress why you should get them. Um, the campaign, like I said earlier, when you get higher up in the waves, um, you will be able to get five star heroes, um, at least their shards as drops. But also when you beat that wave for the first time, you're going to also get... Um, some five star shards straight out the gate so keep that in mind um and another good way to get five star heroes that's not event tied is the tower of oblivion i'm, I'm pretty high up there right now not super high but i'm i'm in there um but from waves 105 up to wave 380 every 25 waves you're going to get a full five star hero 50 hero shards straight to your bag save them for the heroic miracle event by the way don't just pull them out that's another thing to keep in mind um <laughs> It's important. The Heroic Miracle usually rewards a five-star hero for completion as well. Another reason to save them in your bag. Um, but this is a place you can get some five-star heroes. Um, but once you reach wave 405, they stop. They start swapping over to items like super chips or profit orbs, things of that nature. You don't get five-star heroes anymore up past this. At least that I've seen. I haven't seen any higher. And I don't think they ever do. But, you know, whatevs. So anyways, Tower of Oblivion, another way to get five-star heroes. But like I said, in this what not to do section... Mainly the what not to do is spending your event-based resources, even the casino chips. I mean, you can spend a couple for your daily quests. It's not a huge deal, but don't go nuts with them trying to get a five-star hero, four-star hero off the deal. It's just going to hurt you. Don't do it. Save them. Save those back. It's important. Um, and the second thing is wasting gems. This is really important for progress in general because gems are the way you buy most of your event-based currency, which is how you get most of your five-star heroes, which is how you make most of your progress. So obviously, if you're wasting your gems, you're in trouble. So where do people waste their gems mostly? I'll tell you. Right here, 
super chips right here, profits, blessings, and right in here. They'll spend and get four star heroes because they're, oh, I'm, I'm really close to a five star. I got to buy these. Terrible idea. Very rarely will you ever, 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 ever buy one of these. It's like a, one in a million times you actually do that. 99% of the time, you do not touch these ever. It's a waste of your gems. It's going to set you back. The reason I say you don't spend on the super wheel, well, I'll tell you, 500 gems for two chips. Let's go ahead and take a look at the odds here. Yes, they drop five-star heroes. Yes, they can be good. Um, Vesa twice. Lucky me. The odds to get one is, what is it? That's one in 200. A little higher than one in 200. That's not good. That is very bad odds. You're obviously probably not going to get that. What are you going to get? Most likely gold or monster blood. 62.4% of the time, those are the two things you're going to land on. That's it. Now, 6% of the time, you might get a four-star hero. Um, you know, 8% of the time, you might get a Profit Orb. 16% of the time, you might get a Heroic Summon. <clears throat> but for 500 gems, even if you got lucky and you defied the odds and landed both of your lands on a Heroic Summon, that's only 300 gems with Heroic Summons. So essentially, you just took 500 gems to get 300 gems worth of loot. Not worth it. Super Chips are a terrible investment. Do not invest in them. Um, it's a big no-no, it's a big mistake, it's a big gem hole that a lot of new players throw their gems at thinking, oh, look at that great hero on the wheel. You're probably not going to get it. You're just mostly going to be throwing away gems. Um, the second one I said here, the Prophet's Blessing. Why don't you buy these? There's no event tied to them. Um, in rare cases, in certain times, there is a time and a place to buy Prophet or uh, Blessings. And that's usually during shelter missions when you, you're just short a couple of four stars to pull a five star hero out of the event. In that case, sure, go ahead. But 99% of your Prophet's Blessings should come during a profit orb event where you're using your profit orbs and getting profit blessings for free just by using your orbs that's mostly when you should be using them you don't really buy them very much you don't buy these and you absolutely do not buy those those are big gym traps and it's a big what not to do with that said what should you be doing instead well mainly obviously save your resources save them up um like i said look if you look at my bag i'm saving stuff why do I save stuff? Because these things are going to help me chain my progress together. They're going to help me get more four and five star heroes. The more heroes I get, obviously, the more progress I can make in my team, the stronger my team gets. It's, it's never a new circle. OK, save your resources. That's the biggest thing you should be doing. If I can get one thing across to you, that's what it would be. Do not spend your crap outside of events. Don't do it. Um, but what else should you be doing? And that is going to be collecting free gems as much as possible. And that's probably, that's probably the second most asked questions. Where do I get gems? Where do I get a bunch of free gems? Well, lucky you, we're going to talk about it. So every single day, you get these right here. Boom, you get five of them. You get to watch a short video, an ad, um, and it gives you gems straight to your mailbox. If you're a free-to-play player, absolutely, really, there's no reason for any player not to do this. I don't because I'm lazy and a piece of crap. Um, but it's 100 free gems a day. Don't pass it up. There's literally no reason to pass it up. It's free gems. Take the gems. Be happy about it. Um, the other place is going to be your daily sign-in. As you saw earlier, there are gem rewards sprinkled all through this. It's not a lot, but your very first month will have astronomically higher gem totals in all of these spots. They're trying to help you get hooked on, you know, hooked on the game, trying to get you addicted, so they give you a lot more gems than this. But after your first month, they do drop back down. Either way, it's still free gems. Don't miss them. There's no reason to miss them grab them um so that's your first place to get free gems the second place is actually going to be your tavern now if you haven't watched my guides the weekly and monthly events i would recommend you do it'll definitely help you out help you you know learn more about each event that comes around and such um but in this case when it comes to the tavern you do have an option to refresh now it's only if you have tavern quests that are uncompleted if they're completed or they're being started you can't refresh because you have nothing to refresh um but as a free player i believe you have five quest that you get every day tavern quests what you should be doing is rolling um your quest to make sure you're getting at least three star missions for gems it's pretty easy to get them now if you're super duper duper broke on gems don't re-roll don't worry about this step but if you have a little bit extra gems to spare this is a great way to not only get your tavern quests done faster for your monthly events to give you more resources but it's also a place you can actually gain gems because most of the time when i do my re-rolls I come out of my re-rolling, um, I spin a few gems, but I've gotten more in terms of my rewards, as you can see through all these, stashed back for future events even. Um, I'm ready for it. I'm ready for it. 
It's a good thing to be. It's a good place to be. So I would recommend you always re-roll your tavern quest at least to three star for gems. That would be my minimum requirement. Four star for gems and heroic scrolls are great. Um, if you're a little bit tight on gems, don't be afraid to grab things for casino chips or arena tickets just because it's not a bad deal. You can use those in events and it will help you out. And especially if you like I said, if you're low on gems, don't go crazy trying to like target like I'm only looking for five stars today. Don't do that. OK, it's just going to probably end up costing you gems. Don't do it. But the tavern is a great way to get some free gems each day. Don't forget to reroll those. Um, but after that, Celestial Island. Once you hit level 36, you unlock the Celestial Island. Now, yours is not going to look like this when you start out. It's going to be like a little one doohickey here and one doohickey here. Um, but the very first thing you should build as a new player, especially a free to play player, is your gem mines. These puppies right here. Actually, I can upgrade mine. Oop, let's do it. Maxed, woo, can't go up any higher. Um, but if you look at it, these will hold a max of 30 gems, like bam. They make 60 a day each, which you'd say, that's not a lot. That's not a ton of gems. It's not, but when you have two mines up and running, that's free gems every day. Why would you not take them? Build the gem mines first. Let them help you get your gems built up so you can help complete events faster. Celestial Island's a great little extra way to get some free gems every day. It's definitely worth, 100% worth. Um, moving on, probably the fastest way to get bulk um, gems as an early game player is right here. Now, I don't have any right now, but occasionally in your friends list, which is very important to get all of your friends list maxed out, A, it gives you hearts every day, but B, marauders. Now, I don't have any right here, but if there's a marauder, there'll be a little circle right here with like a little face on it. It's a marauder. It's a boss. Um, now, early game, you might not be able to kill them, so you might have to hunt for like the weakest ones to try to pick them off and kill them and get the gems. But the big way you get gems from marauders isn't necessarily killing other people's. While you do get some that way, you mainly get them here. Can I get one? Of course not. Um, but every eight hours, you get a chance to search for a marauder, in other words. Um, now, you don't always get one. Sometimes you get gold, you get hero shards occasionally and stuff like that. But occasionally you're going to find a marauder. It's a boss. When somebody kills that marauder, whether it's you or not, doesn't matter. You're going to get like 320 gems. I don't know if the really early game ones are less. They probably are. Um, but very early on, once you reach like level 80 or 90, you start getting 320 gems anytime somebody kills these. The great news is sometimes you'll spawn these things in three times back to back. Now, it doesn't happen all the time, but that's a free like thousand gems for nothing. Just spawning in a, a just clicking search. Do not neglect this. It's incredibly important. Not only does it help you, but it helps your friends. When your friends see a Marauder, they get gems for killing it for you, not to mention the gems you receive yourself. So be a team player for your friends and make sure you're searching as often as possible to get more Marauders. Okay? But that's the main things where you're going to get free gems. You get free gems in other areas, like doing your arena battles can reward them and things like that. But what we're going to talk about next is a great way to avoid waste. And the biggest waste that I see, besides you know spending your gems here in the market on bad things, is daily quests. Now this is a big trip for new players, and it got me for the longest time, is trying to go for full completions. People see 100 gems up here and think, well, obviously I need to complete this every day. No, no you do not. 100% you do not. Every 48 hours, you will get a heroic summon for free. I just used mine four hours ago or three and a half hours ago, which is why it's got a timer here. And that's why my events look the way they do. On a normal day, if I do not have a free heroic summon to do, I don't do the heroic summon. Because if you do, A, you cut your chances to get a heroic, uh, five star hero in half because um, during no summon events, just a regular heroic summon, you have a 1.58% chance to get a five star. During a heroic summon event, when the summon event starts, it doubles the odds of getting a five star hero. So if you're using those every other day to complete your daily quests, A, you're throwing away gems, but B, you're actually hurting your chances to get five star heroes when the event comes around because you've been throwing away, you know, at least 15 scrolls that month just trying to get your daily quest done. Don't do that. It's going to hurt you. You only get 160 gems a day from your daily quest on a full completion. If you don't do a full completion, you get 20, 40, um, 40 for absolute free. This 20 here for the wishing fountain does obviously cost you a couple wishing coins, but at 60 gems a day, you can get without wasting 150 on a heroic summon to get 160 total gems. I mean, if you do that, you come out 10 gems to the good, not counting your wishing coin costs. It's just not worth it. You shouldn't do it. Unless it's free, skip that. 
Just let your events ride. If you have the Wishing Fountain and the Heroic Summon uncomplete at the end of the day, it's not the end of the world. It might bother your OCD, which it did for me. Um, but other than that, it's it's much better just to skip it. Just skip the Heroic Summon. Let those Heroic Summons, A, pile up in your bag for the event, but also let it save you some gems so that you have gems to buy other things with, like your casino chips that you're going to use for your casino events. Now, why did I talk about casino events earlier and why they were kind of important for five stars? Has nothing to do with the wheel, okay? It has nothing to do with this right here. The chances are too low for it to matter. The reason I think casino events are so important, not only is it because you get four stars off the wheel, and if you, like I said, if you get that four star, which you will long before you get this in most cases, you just hit refresh, and now you got another chance to get another four star, and that's what you want. You want to be doing that, um, not targeting this, not really targeting these either. You'll probably get, you know, the weaker gear before you get the hero anyway, but as soon as you get that four star hero, you refresh the wheel. Now, if you're a free-to-play player and you don't want to spend gems, which you shouldn't, um, casino events run for a week, so you have a week to refresh your wheel every day a couple of times and pull as many four-star heroes as possible off the wheel. Do it. But the big reason it's important is because every time you do a spin, you're rewarded with a 10, 10 of these little currencies up here. Now, I've got a bunch saved back because I just don't spend them very often. But as you can see, there are five-star heroes as rewards here. So, as you save those up doing your casino events, not only are you completing the casino events, getting the loot from that, getting the loot off the wheel, but also you're building up these coins here, which will allow you to straight up buy five-star heroes, which will help you make progress faster. Very important. Now, those are pretty much all the basic tips. If you follow all of that, you do your free gems every day, you don't waste your resources, you know where to get your heroes from, um, you know how to use your creation circle, which is pretty simple. I mean, it's, it's not super complicated. You see a hero you need, you're like, I want to make this guy six star. Well, I'm going to need that guy. Where do I get that guy? Right here. What do I need to make this guy? Boom. Pretty simple stuff. Um, once you know how to do that, your progress will go much faster. I see a lot of people who sabotage themselves like, I've been playing the game for a month and a half. I don't have a six star. The only reason you've been playing the game for a month and a half and don't have a six star is you've been poorly using your gems, poorly managing your time, and not doing your events properly. You've been making a lot of mistakes. That's what happens. New players, it, it, it happens. People make mistakes. I made so many mistakes when I started, which is ridiculous. I was a terrible player. But over, you know, playing for nearly two years, I've learned. I've learned what not to do and what to do. So hopefully this helped you guys out. If it did, don't forget, smash that thumbs up button and show your support if you haven't already. Don't forget to subscribe as well and tell your friends about it because that definitely helps me out a lot. And I will see you guys in the next one.